In today's abandoned video, we head inside a disused school in Manchester that failed to last a decade open before closing due to consecutively bad Ofsted reports. The site consists of a few detached buildings, each with functioning power and water, as well as various items left behind. Everything is still intact and ready for refurbishment. Join us as we explore the facility to see what's left. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last video, we asked the question as to whether graffiti can be artwork in an abandoned building or mindless vandalism. We had some great responses, but have included this one from Apollodora, who agrees with us that art in any way is subjective, but some forms of scribbled graffiti is a waste, especially on a historic old building ruining its features. This week we are asking, should it be an offence for an explorer to switch on the electricity in an abandoned building, because usually someone is paying for the bills? Let us know what you think to possibly feature in our next video. Minimal vegetation overgrowth and a lack of wooden boards projects that this abandoned building should have a clean, recently derelict interior. We also spotted modern CCTV in a dog van, situated in the central courtyard of the school, which would help our beliefs. Having not seen this property visited before us, we didn't have any idea what to expect. However, in no time we had escaped the pouring rain and found our way into the largest section of the complex, interested to see what lay inside. Summer holiday activities, like an advertisement board. I assume a lot of these rooms are just going to be empty classrooms. Maybe downstairs we'll find some stuff. With the top floors appearing empty, we worked our way downstairs. One of the many exit doors. Wow, this is one long but low corridor. I don't think the power's on there, I think that's a skylight. Strange position to have the, um, the lights along the side of the wall. Oh, there's a lot more paperwork in this one. This is definitely RE. Uh, the big cross on the wall. They had little star of the day uh, certificates for students that did well on every, every specific day. We soon found that the power worked in nearly every room, being automatic with sensors in some spaces. Having discovered this place ourselves, we visited on two separate occasions, so you might see differences in the footage. This is a history class. Most of this section of building contained classrooms for all the subjects the school taught to its students, aging from 11 to 16 at a capacity of over 400. As we progress, we leave this region moving into the recreational areas like the sports hall and canteen. Automatic lines, it's a bit creepy. Mm. 
Next, we made our way into a region of the structure boasting science classes with various labs. I much prefer these labs, although the lights aren't on just yet. Just because of the natural light. Clean and tidy, the laboratories are a perfect example of the waste of a valuable learning space, as it appeared that this room was just a lab no longer used, as opposed to a derelict site fallen into disrepair. Upstairs we found an identically furnished room, but with a few slight changes that made it just as interesting as the first lab. Oh, these look like some nice labs. Looks like these ones have more stuff in than the ones below, although no equipment. But on the walls, these biology uh, classwork is pretty cool. All still left. Opening in 2013, the Manchester Bay School hoped to hold almost 500 students, but despite this, its first year in use had under 300 attend. After the poor start, it seemed that the life of the school continued to miss the mark. Ofsted reports described it as inadequate, the worst rating a board can give, and said the standard of education wasn't acceptable for its children. It even read that students felt unsafe because of fighting. The building closed in 2017 expectedly, with its land being primed for developers, as well as rumours that the local residents were unhappy the prize space had acquired a school, and not something better. There's bits of school uniform here. Obviously the school colours on that tie. This should take us to the main hall or the canteen. This looks like the main entrance though. Some nice brickwork there. Or stonework that gives it a bit more character. Powers are all on here as well. Damn. So weird. Unlike other abandoned structures nearby to the school, this one had remained in ideal condition. This is probably because the building is set to be renovated, hence the new security measures that might appear over the top for such a small building. On our second visit when this video was mostly filmed, you see the dog van that made entering trickier, as well as the aftermath of the vandalism that occurred to cause the security's inclusion. This is a staff room. The whiteboards haven't been vandalised or rubbed out yet for any um, self-advertisement. This is all how it was. Year 7, 8 and 9. Curri curriculum options. English, Math, Science, History, Geography, Spanish. RE, Music, Art, PE, Media, ICT. And P4C, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe a school, individual, class. Wow, it's quite nice in here. I like the um, hexagons on the ceiling. There's quite a lot of stuff in here as well. Probably the junk that they couldn't sell or remove, just stored. The main hall was quite appealing, although it had no architectural significance. A lot of furniture and items had been stored inside when the school had closed, but you would struggle to tell on our second visit when the vandalism had taken place. The destruction was extremely noticeable, with the neatly stacked chairs thrown around and glassware from the science area smashed all over the ground. It was amazing to us how much can happen in just a couple weeks time. There's more school uniform. We've been all hung up, 
by the coat hangers, it looks like, on this bit of Harris fence. These are brand new though, never worn. Still in the packaging. Here's the canteen where all the students would have collected their food each day. Still reasonably intact. We've suddenly got a lot quieter in this part of the Explorer, as you'll see in that van. Here's a dog. It's behind bars in the cage, but it's in there and we can see it lying down. Obviously we don't just want to walk in full view of it, so it starts barking then whoever's with it comes. So this is about as much as I can show of the kitchen without going too close. Finally we moved across to a separate building featuring the sports hall. On our first visit we did see another segment of the facility, but this was blocked off by the dog van now. Thankfully there wasn't much of interest inside anyway. Oh, there's quite a lot of furniture in here. This would have been the art studio. That's why all schools have these sorts of uh, sofas. Ah, these were the lockers. This is where they all went. They probably would have lined a lot of the corridors. Now there's tons here. Even though the classroom had been utilised as a locker storage area, there was a good amount of artwork remaining, covering the walls and hanging from the ceiling. Jeez. There's so much echo in here. With the buzzing of electrics above us, the ambience in the empty gymnasium was very atmospheric. It sits in an immaculate way, unfitting that no one uses it anymore. There was more than enough time to use the many footballs and even badminton sets to play about when it was too rainy to do so outside. There's a lot of stuff in this supply closet. All the balls. And these poles would have been for the nets. Badminton rackets too. It felt right to conclude our visit in a room that signifies the waste of function the premises is experiencing at the moment. Its clean interior deserves use and hopefully will in the future, whether as a school or something else. Turning off each light we had switched on, we left the property in darkness again as it waits for the imminent transformation. We hope you enjoyed seeing us explore the school. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs from the Explore. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we post images of our Explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We are beginning to start properly exploring again with lockdown lifted and look forward to sharing some of our recent finds. See you next time.